hello students welcome you all on your pd education so my dear students as you know we already started a series of almost 250 questions which are more predictable or the important problems related to gate data science and ai so today in this video we are going to discuss the 10 more important important questions from the subject dbms and warehouse as you know in DBMS and warehouse, approximate 8 to 10 marks question may be asked and these are the easy one question so you can score easily full out of full, fine. So moving towards the first problem, please try to solve the problem which of the following concurrency control protocol ensure both conflict serializability and freedom from the deadlock. So my dear students, keep in mind the important points here. In this problem, we have two important points. One is we need to find out conflict serializability and the schedule must be free from deadlock. So can you just tell me out of the these two, two phase locking protocol and time stop ordering protocol, which one always ensures the conflict serializability as well as provides the freedom from deadlock so talking about 2pl keep in mind my dear students always make a note regarding the 2pl because 2pl is the most important protocol 2pl two phase locking protocol in two phase locking protocol we know one phase is the locking phase and the next phase is the unlocking phase so a transaction if commit any of the log or release any of the log afterwards it never re generate a request for the locking that's why it is called two phase locking protocol in one phase you can request only for the log but once you release any of the log you cannot request for the new log that's why 2pl the first important point is in 2pl it always guaranteed us conflict serializable schedule but the problem with the 2pl is it is not free from not free from irrecoverability it is not free from deadlock and it is also not free from starvation so always keep in mind these four most important points related to 2PL. 2PL always ensure the serializability, but it never ensure the irrecoverability, deadlock, deadlock free or the starvation free schedule. So moving ahead the problem, which of the following concurrency control protocol ensure both conflict serializability and freedom from deadlock so two phase locking protocol always ensure conflict serializability but it never ensure deadlock free that's why we are going to use timestamp ordering protocol as each transaction has a timestamp value which is given by the dbms and that we are going to use the status the meaning of the timestamp value is the status of the transaction the given transaction is the older one or the new one fine that's why it is always deadlock free and it always ensures conflict serializability mainly we have two type of timestamp ordering protocol one is basic timestamp ordering protocol and the next one is thomas write rate timestamp ordering protocol out of that the thomas is the important one fine so keep in mind the right answer is only two so timestamp ordering protocol always ensures conflict serializability as well as free from deadlock. The next problem is consider the following schedule for the transaction T1, T2 and T3. We have to find out if the given schedule is serializable then what should be the serial sequence of that schedule. Moving towards the problem with the that's See, my dear students, in this case, what we have to do? First of all, we need to check the given schedule is conflict serializable schedule or not. If the given schedule is conflict serializable, 
then with the help of topological ordering we are able to find out the equivalent serial sequence. So, first of all we need to generate the precedence graph. So, what should be the precedence graph of given problem? We have three transactions one is T1, the next one is T2 and the next one is T3. So, we have to construct the edges with respect to conflict pairs. So, you can see here it is a conflict pair read write on the same data item that is Y. It means edge should be from T3 to T2. The next conflict pair is you can see here again T3 to T2 and the next one is T1 to T2. Is there any conflict pair? No, not we have only two conflict pairs fine. So, now our task is to find out the topological sequence. How we have to generate the topic top, topological sequence of the given graph? What the algorithm is? It says start from the vertex which has 0 incident edge. We have two different vertices T1 and T3 on which no edges are incident. It means we can start from either T1 or we can start from T3. So, if we start with the T1, we need to delete the T1. So, after deleting, we have only one choices that is T3 which haven't any incident edge means T3 and next the remaining one is T2. And if we start with the T3, we have one more option T2, T1 and then T2 fine. So, we have two sequence of schedule which are serial fine then according to we have to match the options T1, T3, T2, T1, T3, T2 A is the right one next T2, T1, T3 no T2, T1, 3 is not possible but T3, T1, T2 is possible so A and D are the correct options. Next my dear students this is a problem related to finding the candidate key as this is one mark problem so you can easily find out the candidate key for given relational schema. Here we have a relational schema R having the attribute role number, name, license number, marks and course and the given FD set is role number and name uniquely determine marks, course uniquely determine license number, role number uniquely determine name then how to find out the candidate key. For that we need to find out the attribute set closure. Now just tell me which set of attribute derives all the attributes of relation R. See just see if I just find out the roll number, roll number closure. So roll number closure determines roll number then it determines name. fine and roll number name determines marks but how to determine course and license number so we need to add roll number with course which determines all the attribute of relation R that's why my candidate key is roll number with course because after just finding the closure of roll number with course we are able to uniquely determine each and every attribute of relation fine that's why the correct candidate key for the given problem is roll number with course but not only roll number keep in mind next again a problem related to transaction and concurrency pr protocol two marks problem consider two transaction t1 and t2 and four schedule we have instead of four we have two so, given which of the following schedules are conflict serializable, given two schedule again we need to find out the conflict serializability. We have two type of serializability one is conflict and the next one is view out of that conflict is the most important fine already in computer science gate problem 
I think almost 20 to 30 problems are totally based upon conflict serializability in the previous year papers. So keep in mind that is the important, most important topic. Now to find out the conflict serializability for the schedule S1, we need to again generate the precedence graph. So in the schedule S1, we have two transactions. One is T1, next is T2. Now see, is there any conflict pair? Because these are the read operations, no need to check it. The first one is write. Write on data item X by transaction T1. Now just see, is there any else operation which are going to be performed on data item X by T2 transaction? There is no such operations, fine. Next, go ahead and here, transaction T2 performing write operation on data item Y and afterwards transaction T1 also perform write operations. It means there is a precedence from T2 to T1. But other than that there is no precedence. It means no cycle is in the precedence graph. It means S1 is conflict serializable schedule. Go ahead and check for the S2 in the similar way. We need to generate the precedence graph. Again here we have two transactions. One is T1, next is T2. Next check the conflict pair. See my dear students, here R1X, fine. Now R2 is also performing read operations, but read read is not a conflict pair. Other than that, there is no such operations on data item X. Fine. Now here you can see it's a conflict pair from T1 to T2, T1 to T2. Next, is there any conflict pair from T2 to T1? We need to check it. Here transaction T2 perform the read operations on data item X. Is there any other operations? No for the data item X, fine. Now again here T2 to T1 there is no such precedence. Again it means it is also conflict serializable schedule because there is no cycle in the graph, fine. That's why both the schedules are conflict serializable schedule because while constructing the precedence graph, there is no cycle in the graph. That's why it is conflict serializable schedule. Next, my dear students, number of statement are correct. The first statement related to the normalization is if every key is simple, then R, the relational schema R, always be in 2NF, but may or may not in 3NF. So, see. If every key is simple, it means proper subset of key is not possible. And if proper subset of not mm, proper subset of key is not possible, that means function um, partial dependency not possible. And if partial dependency is not possible, that means yes, relation always be in 2NF, but it may or may not be in 3NF. That's why the statement first is the correct one. The next statement is if every attribute here talking about attribute if every attribute is prime if every attribute is prime it means transitive dependency is never be possible and if that is not the case the relation always be in 3NF but may or may not be in BCNF keep in mind again these two statements are very important please make a short note for these two statements both statements are true fine the first statement is if every key is simple then relation always be in 2nf if every attribute of relation r is prime then always be in 3nf next which it's a problem related to data warehouse the problem statement is which of the following is not a technique of discretization so by cluster we can discrete the data set by decision tree also we can discrete we can create a or discrete the data set by histogram we can see the pattern of the data and by the correlation analysis again we can 
generate or we can decide the data fine it means my dear students to discrete the data all four are the different techniques and one is bagging is another one of the technique so we have almost five technique by cluster by decision tree by histogram by correlation analysis and by bagging so all these statements are true next which statement is correct related to the concept of hierarchy in addressing the missing data and enhancing data quality see my dear students whenever we go with the data analysis part first of all sometimes we may receive the raw data so the first and the foremost task for us is to at least we have to do some removing the missing data or we need to improve the quality of the data because the raw data from the raw data it's very hard to analyze the facts that's why my dear students keep in mind it's a hierarchical approach is one of the approach in which which is helpful to increase the quality of the data and how we are going to increase the quality the things which are not useful for us we are just trying to delete that things we are identify the missing data we are like check the data types and that is the most important point that's why the statement is concept hierarchies can improve the data quality but are not effective in handling missing data that is wrong with the hierarchical technique we also handling the missing data as well as we also improve the data quality that is the important points so keep in mind the first statement is the false statement but the second one is the true statement fine because with the help of hierarchical ad approach we increase the data quality as well as we identify or estimate the missing values in our data set next which of the following is true about the above queries the first query is select distinct a from r where b is 10 so what what is the evolution of this query first of all it only select those rows having b greater than 10 and from that it just select the values of a attribute in the second case select a from r but here a is not selecting the distinct one but we are going to use group by a how we are grouping the a where b is greater than 10 it means for individual value of a we are making a group it means all again we are finding the distinct value of a it means query q1 and q2 will produce the same answer next let block size is 1024 byte key size is 10 byte record size is 8 byte block pointer is 6 byte what is the order of b tree so my dear students if i go with the internal structure internal structure of b tree so we have p block pointer plus p minus 1 key plus each key have its record pointer which should be less than equal to block size so what you have to do is p block pointer is 6 byte 6p plus p minus 1 what is the size of key 10 plus p minus 1 record pointer 8 which should be less than 1024 you need to solve the value of p whatever the pv you have next according to basic timestamp ordering protocol which transaction should be rollback see my dear students we have mainly three important key points in basic timestamp ordering protocol keep in mind suppose that we have t1 we have transaction t2 t1 timestamp value is 10 t2 is greater than 10 it means t2 is the newer transaction t1 is the older transaction then keep in mind my dear students if if that may be the case read a 
after that older transaction perform the right operations or t1 t2 again 10 and 20 it just perform the right t1 afterwards perform the read or the third case is suppose t1 is t2 is performing first right then one then one, then t1 performing the right in all the cases t1 is going to be rollback it means if older tr transaction perform any of the operations fine which is already done by the newer transaction other than read read then it's a create a problem and we need to roll back the older transaction these is these are the three cases fine now see my dear students timestamp value is 10 20 and 30 it means 10 1 10 t1 is the older transaction t3 is the newer transaction now see my dear students here you can see we have a conflict newer transaction perform the read afterwards it perform the right it means the case one it means need to roll back t2 fine that is the case so we need to roll back t2 fine that is the case yes so t2 should be roll back so okay my dear students these are the 10 important problems related to data warehouse and database management system if you have if you want to access the pdf questions with their solution pdf you can just need to like submit the google form you have to fill the queries related to the google form which is in the description link of the videos or in the description so you just need to fill that google form and you are able to access all the 250 questions with their solutions fine my dear students still if you have any query you can reach out to your PD education platform and if you are new to the, this platform or if you want to start your journey of data science and AI with your PDA, you can enroll we already started our batch for the online as well as offline mode thank you